Good day, everyone. After discussing the laws of radicals, what am I going to discuss today is how to simplify radical expressions and we are going to use those laws that we have discussed. In simplifying radical expression, you have to remember the following. Number one, there should be no, no prime factor of a radicand that has an exponent equal to or greater than the index. So, wala dapat na exponent ang radicand na equal or mas malaki pa sa ating index. Number two, there should be no fraction present in the radicand. So, dapat ang radicand natin ay hindi na naka-fraction. And then lastly, we have to make sure that there is no denominator that contains a radical sign. Wala dapat na radical sign ang ating denominator. So again, these are the three conditions for us to say that a radical expression is already in the simplest form. Na one, there should be no exponent equal or greater than the index. Number two, there should be no fraction in the radicand. And number three, there should be no radical sign in the denominator. Let us have the following radical expressions as our examples. Considering number 1, we have cube root of 54. Alam naman ninyo that 54 is not a perfect cube. But using the law of radicals, number 2, wherein the nth root of AB is equal to the nth root of A multiplied by the nth root of B. Meaning to say, we are going to look for the factors that is actually a perfect cube. And what are the factors of 54 wherein 1 is a perfect cube? Yes, 54 can be expressed as 27 times 2 wherein 27 is a perfect cube. Following our law of radical number 2 again, we can write is we can write it as cube root of 27 multiplied by the cube root of 2. Then we are going to simplify cube root of 27 so it can be written as 3 square root of 2. So to simplify cube root of 54, its simplest form is 3 cube root of 2. If we have the second radical expression, if we have square root of 10, 10 also is not a perfect square, but the factors of 10 are only 10 times 1 or we can have 5 times 2. If you are going to look at these numbers, 10 and then 5 and 2, you are going to notice that these are all not a perfect square. So what do we mean by that? Since yung 10 ay wala ng factor na perfect square, it means that square root of 10 is already in the simplest form. Hindi na natin yan masisimplify. In the same manner, if I have square root of 15, you all know that the factors of 15 are 5, time th 5 and 3. And none of it is a perfect square. So square root of 15 is already in the simplest form. If suppose I have square root of 12, the factors are pwedeng 6 times 2, we can also have 4 times 3. In this case, our perfect square is 4. So you can write square root of 12 as square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 3. Then we are going to simplify square root of 4, so we have 2 square root of 3. So the simplest form of square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3. I hope you can follow. Not le now, let us proceed with example number 3. We have here square root of x to the 6. So, ang tanong is, how are we going to simplify if the radicand has an exponent? If we have square root of x to the 6 and we are going to write this as rational exponent, then we will be having x raised to 6 over 2. And if we simplify this, it will become x cubed. So, in simplest form, the square root of x to the 6 is actually x cubed. So, ano lang ang ginagawa natin for us to simplify those radicand with an exponent? We just, yes, we are just going to divide our exponent to our index. Ano? So, if we have, for example, 4th root of a to the 8, to simplify, you are just going to divide this. So, the answer is a squared. And if we have cube root of b to the 12, again, you are just going to divide it. So its simplest form is b raised to 4. But what if we have cube root of x squared? Can we still simplify it? 
Yes, this one is already in the simplest form. Bakit? Because if you are going to notice, our exponent is already less than our index. Again, in our condition, there should be no exponent equal or greater than the index. So, ibig sabihin, kung less than yung ating exponent sa index, it is already in the simplest form. Ang hindi lang pwede ay kung equal ang exponent sa index o kaya greater than pa yung ating exponent sa index. That is why if we have fifth root of y to the 10, you are going to notice that our exponent is still greater than 5. So meaning to say it can be simplified. And to simplify, you are just going to divide it. So its simplest form is y squared. I hope you can still follow. Now, what if we have example number 4? We have here the square root of y raised to 13. 13 is still greater than the index 2. So, meaning to say, you still have to simplify. But the problem here is, 13 is not divisible by 2. So, how are you going to simplify it? Katulad lang ng ginagawa natin in here, we are going to find factors. So, we are going to factor out y raised to 13. And to do that, that is y raised to 12 multiplied by y. Using the law of exponent, we have here 12 plus 1 that is equal to 13. So these two expressions are just the same. Pareho lang tong dalawang to. Ano? Now if you are going to ask, ma'am, can I have y raised to 10 multi multiply by y raised to 3? Because 10 plus 3 is also equal to 13. This is actually not not correct. Why? Because you are going to notice that the exponent 3 here is still greater than the index 2. In factoring our expression with exponent, you have to make sure that one of the factor, the exponent, is already smaller than the index. In this case, 12 is divisible by 2 and then the other exponent 1 is already less than the index 2. So, ganun dapat ang gagawin ninyo. Yung isang factor divisible, yung isa naman ang exponent is already less than our index. And if we simplify it, yes, law of radicals, you can write that way. And if we simplify, we divide 12 divided by 2, so that is y to the 6. And then you are just going to copy. You cannot simplify it anymore because the exponent 1 is already less than the index 2. So our final answer is y raised to 6 square root of y. I hope you can follow. Let's have one more example. Suppose we have cube root of a to the 10. Hahatiin natin ng 10. Yung isa divisible sa 3. Yung isa mas maliit na sa 3. So to factor it, the correct factors are actually a raised to 9. That is divisible by 3 multiplied by a wherein the uh, exponent 1 is already less than the index 3. So to simplify cube root of a to the 10, we have here 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we have a cube and then you are going to write cube root of a. Let us have example number 5. We have 24x squared y. So hahatiin natin, we are going to factor out 24 wherein 1 is a perfect square because our index is 2. We have here the exponent 2, mas ma ay equal sa ating index, so pwede yung simplify which is already divisible. On the other hand, yung ating y dito, the exponent is 1, it is already less than the index 2. So if we are going to simplify this, yung factors ng 24 are 4 and 6, wherein 4 is the perfect square. Yung x squared natin, hindi na natin ipa-factor because 2 here is already divisible by the index 2 and then we are are just going to copy y. We are going to combine yung terms na perfect square. In here, 4 and x squared are the perfect square. So we have here the square root of 4x squared. Multiply yung hindi natin makukuha ang square root. Multiply by the square root of 6y. So pinagsama lang natin yung pwedeng masimplify at pinagsama natin yung already in the simplest form. And to simplify further, the square root of 4x squared is 2x. And then we simply copy 6 square root of 6y. So again, the square root of 2x squared y is equal to 2x square root of 6y. Let us have one more example for you to understand better. We have here cube root of 16, x cube, y squared. We need to factor out 16. 1 is a perfect cube. 3 here, 
equal. So, isi-simplify na yan. And then, twice squared, 2 here is already least, less than the index 3. So, if we are going to do it or simplify it, we have here 8 times 2, that is equal to 16, wherein 8 is our perfect cube. We just write x cubed, masi-simplify din natin, and then y squared is already in the simplest form. Yung pwede natin kunin ang cube root or yung masi-simplify, pagsasamahin lang natin. So, we have cube root of 8x cubed, at yung dalawa na hindi na pwedeng pag-simplify, pinagsama din natin cube root of 2y squared. And if we simplify cube root, of 8x cubed, obviously that is equal to 2x. There is our 2x. And then we just copy cube root of 2y squared because that is already in the simplest form. So the answer is 2x. We have cube root of 2y squared. I hope you can follow. Let us proceed with more examples. Let us have here example number 7, 8, 9, 10, wherein our radicand is expressed as fraction. Based on our condition, wala dapat fraction sa loob ng radical sign. So, walang fraction sa radicand. So, we need to simplify the following. If we have fifth root of x to the 6 over y to the 10, to be able to simplify, we are going to follow law of radicals number 3. We are going to write it as fifth root of x to the 6 and then fifth root of y to the 10. We are going to simplify. 6 is not divisible by 5, so hahatiin natin ang x to the 6, wherein it will become x to the fifth multiply by x. It is equal to x to the 6. And then, we are just going to copy the denominator. Bakit? Because 10 is divisible by 5. Hindi na natin hahatiin yan. Ano? Then, we are going to simplify the fifth root of x to the fifth is equal to x. Then, you are just going to write fifth root of x. There you have it, fifth root of x. So, isinulat natin to as fifth root of x to the fifth multiply by fifth root of x using the law of radicals number 2. The answer here, pareho ang ating index at saka exponent using law of radicals number 1. That's why the answer there is x. And then we just copy this one, fifth root of x. And then for our denominator, we just divide 10 and 5. So we have here y squared. So the final answer is x, fifth root of x over y squared. For our next example, we have here cube root of x to the 6 over y squared. Again, law of radicals number 3, cube root of x to the 6 over cube root of y squared. We are going to divide 6 and 3. That's why you have here x squared. Take note, the 2 here, exponent, is already less than 3. So we have here cube root of y squared. But, According to condition number 3, no denominator contains a radical sign. It means wala dapat na radical sign sa ating denominator. And if we are going to look at here, meron tayong radical sign sa denominator. So, we cannot accept this answer. Ano? The question is, what are we going to do or how are we going to eliminate the radical sign in the denominator? The process of eliminating the radical sign in the denominator is called rationalizing the denominator. Again, we need to eliminate the radical sign in the denominator kasi hindi pa simplest form kung may radical sign sa denominator. And the process of eliminating that radical sign is by rationalizing the denominator. In this case, our index is 3. Our exponent is 2. So, ano ba yung imumultiply mo sa y squared para siya ay maging perfect cube? Yes, you need to multiply it by the cube root of y. Because if we multiply by, if you multiply that 2, it will become cube root of y cube. Because 2 plus 1 is 3. And according to law of radical, number 1, if we have cube root of y cube, pareho lang ang ating index at saka denominator, the answer will become y, mawawala na ang ating radical sign. So again, we are going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the cube root of y. It will become 
x squared over cube root of y squared multiplied by the cube root of y over cube root of y. In rationalizing the denominator, we are not going to change the value of our expression. How come? Cube root of y over cube root of y is equal to 1. So, meaning to say, minumultiply natin tong expression na ito sa 1. And as you all know, any expression multiplied by 1 is the expression itself. So, kahit i-multiply natin siya sa expression na to, which is equal to 1, hindi natin binabago yung value ng ating expression. What we are trying to do here is we are just going to write it in a manner that we are eliminating the radical sign in our denominator. So, if we multiply, that is numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator. If you multiply yung ating numerator, x squared multiplied by cube root of y, that would be x squared cube root of y. And if you multiply cube root of y squared multiplied by cube root of y, that will be equal to cube root of y cube. And then, law of radical, number 1, same index, same exponent, mawawala na yan, matitira na lang is y. So, the final answer is x squared cube root of y over y. And itong expression na to ay pareho lang sa expression na yan. Isinulat lang natin sa paraan na mawawala na ang radical sign. So definitely, these two are just the same. Yung ating radical sign sa numerator, we allow that. Ano? Yung radical sign lang is not allowed if it is in the denominator. So this is our final answer. So, if we have square root of 4 over 3, law of radicals number 3, square root of 4 over square root of 3, it will become 2 over square root of 3. Again, we cannot allow this because there is a radical sign in our denominator. So, we need to multiply it by an expression that will make our denominator a perfect square para mawala ang radical sign. And what is that expression? Yes, we are going to multiply it by square root of 3 over square root of 3. If you multiply our numerator, it will become 2 square root of 3. Yung dalawang square root of 3 can be written as square root of 3 squared. Our index here is 2, our exponent is 2, so mawawala na yan, matitira na lang is 3. So the final answer is 2 square root of 3 over 3. Again, that is rationalizing the denominator. And for our last example, we have the square root of 1 over 3a to the fifth. So, square root of 1, law of radicals number 3, square root of 1 over square root of 3a to the fifth. Square root of 1 is 1, and then square root of 3a to the fifth, we need to eliminate the radical sign by rationalizing the denominator. The question is, anong expression ang imumultiply natin? Yung 3, anong imumultiply natin? Katulad dito, imumultiply din natin sa 3. Ano? And then, yung a to the fifth, saan natin imumultiply? Yung a to the fifth natin, para maging divisible sa ating index na 2, we can multiply it by a. Because if you do that, it will become a to the 6. At yung 6 natin is already divisible by the index 2. So, we are going to multiply this expression by the square root of 3a. If we do that, 1 times square root of 3a is a square root of 3a. And then, square root of 3a to the fifth. Multiply by the square root of 3a, it will become 9a to the 6. You cannot simplify square root of 3a, so square root of 3a sa taas. And then, bakit naging 3a cube? Square root of 9 is 3. And then, we have square root of a to the 6. You divide 6 and 2. That's why you have here a cube. So, the final answer is square root of 3a over 3a cube. Again, this is how you simplify you, your radical expression. You just need to remember again this three. There should be no exponent equal or greater than the index. There should be no fraction in our radicand. And there should be no radical sign in our denominator. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.